On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1987. We're going to be taking a look at Johnny Winter and he's going to be performing Sound the Bell. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So this performance is a bit of a long one. The video is just over eight minutes in length. We will watch it the whole way through, but a link to this performance video is gonna be in the description below as always. So you guys can click on that to watch it without me interrupting it. And there are so many things that could be pointed out about this performance that it could go on all year. We'll see how we get on also from a copyright perspective. Hopefully it'll be okay. I know that Johnny Winter's stuff and especially the Woodstock performance is blocked on copyrights but hopefully this one will be okay we will see so let's get Johnny up on screen with his band and see how he gets on Hello, how
I'm just going to jump in here. First of all, just to have a word on the tuning, because Johnny has detuned his guitar by a tone here. So it means that all of his playing is going to be two frets above where it would normally be in standard tuning. So if you do have your guitars out, just bear that in mind that everything that I'm going to be demonstrating because my guitar's still in standard tuning and my high E string is an E, it means that I'm going to be a couple of frets below where Johnny's playing and the positions won't quite match up with the video, but it's only really relevant if you're wanting to play it exactly the same way that Johnny's playing here in terms of having your hand in what would be the A position rather than having it down in the G position. But this is in G, but because of the detuning, it looks like Johnny's playing in A. You can hear on my sound as well, I got a little bit of distortion on there because Johnny's got some distortion on his sound as well. So just to try and match it up a little bit. The first thing to point out is the fact that Johnny, when he's singing, and just to throw it out there, that he does sing at the same time as not only just playing chords, he's playing riffs here at the same time. And that really does ramp up the difficulty because a lot of players sometimes just don't play at all when they sing, especially blues when you've got guys like B.B. King who would sing and then play a response line on the guitar and leave the rhythm to the other members of the band. But here, Johnny is playing the riff of the verse, which is so involved at the same time as singing. So breaking it down, we've got this again with the tuning. <laughs> We're going to be jumping from first fret to third fret on this low E string. And we've got this. Which is quite an involved run. So having this. Going all the time is just so impressive on so many levels to be able to just do that all subconsciously. He moves over then to the A, same shape. Like that. And now he gets into what would be his B7 position at the bottom because of the change in tuning. You'll have to adapt your playing a little bit. You can play it there if you want to which is that third finger on the D of your A string. That's going to be fifth fret. You can slide it down if you want to as well, but we have lots of little runs going on that happen. All that kind of stuff that sometimes happen in the place of that second chord. The other thing to mention is that Johnny's got the thumb pick on here and he's using that in combination with his first finger and second finger. And I'm just using a pick here holding it. I haven't got a thumb pick, at least not in reach, but I very much technique wise have learned to play with a pick and not so much a hybrid picking, even though it is possible. Yeah. We have a little bit of that kind of stuff going on. So I've just taken it back to the beginning. We're not gonna go through every single phrase being played, but I just want to demonstrate and show what Johnny's doing here and how he daisy chains so many little runs and little licks together. And it's just seamless. He also knows exactly when to leave space, when to speed things up and slow things down. But let's have a little listen. So there, straight away, we've got this. And then we're going straight into. And we've got the variation on that intro riff. We're getting into another phrase here. So all of this stuff that we've got here, all of these lines into that classic blues ending where we have this and, and bringing it down to fifth fret of what would be our D in standard tuning. And that's a little line that is just classic blues and Johnny's one of those guys who had every single run, every single way of playing the blues 
just in his back pocket. He could just pull it out whenever he wanted to. But that beat... Before, because... That would be just before your turnaround back into your G, starting back with a riff, where Johnny would then come in with a vocal, or starting again with another batch of lead. So we'll just have a listen out for the end of that run and see if you can spot that very final note. And great example there, where we have this. It's literally one, two, three, four, five. And that's it, a little bit of space that Johnny's put in there because it's been pretty relentless so far at the beginning of the song with this intro. It's been a lot of lead, a lot of notes. He just throws in a little bit of space just to draw you in a little bit more, but then it'll take you on another journey. going to jump in here because this is a great example of Johnny's playing how he could just go anywhere on that fretboard and he always had another place and another site that he could show you on the journey there's just endless licks and great runs here great technique since I stopped the video last there's been so much technique and it's only been a few seconds and if I was to try and break this down note by note, technique by technique, it would literally take years because there's so much in there. The other thing that you'll find Johnny did was just repeat phrases, whether this be a little melodic line or just a few notes over and over again, like we just had before I stopped the video. We have this. Just to repeat, but it's so cool just to give you something a little bit different. And this is what lead guitar is all about, just mixing it up and repeating certain sections, but then not overdoing it. Because then as soon as he's repeated those notes, he'll then move on. And it's a common theme throughout the solo. You can listen out for little runs that he throws together, maybe two, three or four times and then moves on from. And it's always something that's really cool, melodic and totally in key. It's not too far out there that it doesn't make sense melodically. But let's get back into it and just see where he goes next. And there was a bit of a crazy bend there as well. You've got to factor in that we are detuned. So the strings are gonna be a little bit looser. So if you're trying to do this in standard tuning and you've maybe got 10s or 11s on your guitar, it's gonna be nigh impossible to get these same bends. The detuning really does help with that. Again, really cool stuff here. We've got this little slides up like that in your pentatonic shape one in G minor here the like that but let's get back into it And then we're into the verse. We've also got this, these repeats of bends in there, so much variation going on here. And we have this. I think he actually cuts off the end of this run before we get into the vocal. Let's have a listen. Yeah, it's kind of in there that. It's kind of there, but it just cuts it off getting into that vocal. So again, so much technique going on. Let's just maybe move it on a little bit. I can't remember exactly why I stopped it, about halfway through, but we will jump a little bit further forward. Heard that little trill there as well, the, um, or oh, actually, 
In standard tuning, that's gonna be on your third fret, hammering on and pulling off to that sixth fret. Again, he's doing this at the same time as singing. We've also got this unison bend sound quite a lot, the that kind of thing, like that. Let's just jump into it again. I'm just gonna jump in here because again, we had that little repeat of a phrase. We had this. I might actually take it back to have a little listen. It was along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. I think actually he moves up on that second part, but it's that bend, the that he's then giving you again. And then he'll move up into that kind of sound. And he's repeating this a few times, I think. Okay, little variation there. We've got and into so that kind of thing. Again, just constantly mixing things up all the time. And this, you might be bringing over that third finger. And again, and this minor pentatonic extended shape, just adding in so much expression with everything that he's playing, but he's constantly mixing it up. And there we've got this. That bend on the high E string, Johnny's got a little bit more gain than I have on that top end. I'm losing a bit of sustain there, but the control of vibrato as well, it's all there technique wise. And you just feel like he could play all day and never get bored <laughs> with playing and you'll never get bored listening to what he's playing because he's just got so many places that he can go and it's just endless. This is the other thing to point out, that it's not something that he's sat down and practiced for eight minutes, just separate lines and they always happen like that. He's just shooting from the hip, just going through particular lines, going to different places, depending on where he feels like going at that time. So it's really just the case that he could play it this way one night and then the next night will be totally different, the lines that he's throwing together. This is the thing that once you start watching it, there's so much going on, you just end up watching the whole video again. But we've got this little. And. The little run up that we have, again, just that pentatonic shape one, and it'll look like he's playing it in A, but don't get distracted by that. He might even start it a little bit lower down, but just throwing in runs there as well. I'm just gonna rewind that. So again, we've got a little repeat of a line. 
I'm not sure exactly what the notes are going to be here. Something like that. <laughs> that kind of thing. So, uh, those probably aren't the notes, but it's all about putting that little hook in there of the bend. So you have the bend that just piques your interest and then he goes back to it just a few times and I'm just going to listen to it again. Okay, and then we're the... Yeah, we're back into our shape one at the bottom there. But let's get back into the performance. I did warn you, this could go on all night, but we'll watch it all the way to the end. And there we have it. I love the way that Johnny just seamlessly jumps back into that rhythm. And when I'm saying rhythm, it is just lead guitar underneath the singing. He just doesn't miss a beat throughout the whole performance. And there's loads of just top level guitar work going on. 
when he throws it back down to the bottom of the guitar, getting back into phrases, going all the way up to our octave. So this, which will be our octave above our G shape here. But even having this, throwing in lines that are very complex in nature and just top from a technique perspective, he's throwing those in with that thumb pick and using the first finger and second finger as well on some of these runs. Okay, I just wanna highlight another little part where we have a repeat of a phrase and this is something that I think Johnny just came up with. Every time that he played, he would just play a line and then he might just repeat it three or four times, but listen to this. I mean there, first of all, we've got this. And he's kind of playing this uh, with his thumb pick and with his fingers. So it's not gonna sound the same when I do it, but he's having this jump from here down to his position at the bottom. Obviously it's gonna look like he's playing in A, but it's in G. And here we have this little repeat of a phrase. We've got. It's that kind of thing going on. And then really cool line to end with. We did have uh, quite a lot of repeats on that phrase that we we're playing there, but then we had this. That kind of thing, which was. And then just ending it with something slightly different as the response to all of those calls that have happened previously. So really cool playing here with everything Johnny's throwing together. So much technique and it is breathless in terms of looking at the techniques, breaking down what he's doing and just trying to keep up with it all. Again, that, that. That's now string skipping. He's playing over D to A, G. So he's jumping over to A from, from A to D. It's just really cool the way that he just throws it in there seamlessly and effortlessly, but there's so much that goes into being able to do this. And again, just breaking up all of the faster sections with this little line that we had before. And using it as a little bit of a break to put on a little bit of entertainment, showmanship, call it what you will, but it's getting the crowd involved a little bit more. This is one of those performances as well that has the crowd sitting down and it's a very formal kind of setup. Whereas this kind of performance in front of a crowd who are standing at the front of the stage, you could just see the crowd would be going wild here. And Johnny's still putting on that show. Even though people are seated, he's still just getting people involved. And there are a few people you can see in the audience nodding their head up and down getting into it, but it's very much a reserved audience here, but that doesn't stop Johnny from really laying into the performance. But we are gonna be calling things to a close for this video. Right at the end there, of that last section we looked at, we had a little section where we have this. <laughs> And he does jump over into that major shape, then back into that minor shape. So just chopping and changing between his major and minor keys as well. And that's what the blues is all about. And Johnny was just a master of the blues, but a master of pretty much everything on the guitar. Styles, uh, technique, you name it, he could do it. 
and he could sing as well. This is the other thing that you will find other videos on Johnny here on the channel and Edgar as well, his brother. So you can check those out if you want to independently. But there is so much going on in this particular video and performance that, yeah, you just can't break it all down because it would take years. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Keep those suggestions for future videos coming in the comments section below. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.